Hi Bricks community, this is John with Aperture Digital. I wanted to record a video today uh, to talk about the Bricks 1.5 Beta, a little bit about some of their uh, new nestable features, and more importantly, uh, dynamic data inside those nestable uh, components. Uh, so what we're gonna go over today are Bricks templates and dynamic data, and uh, we're gonna power this uh, using Metabox. So we're gonna start off uh, creating a Metabox custom post type with some custom fields to uh, help us manage uh, what we're gonna call our team member uh, custom post type. Uh, inside that custom post type, we're gonna add three fields, an image, heading, and description. And if you don't have Metabox, uh, there are some other plugins out there that will get the job done. I think there uh, are free uh, versions of ACF that can probably do this and the uh, custom post types UI uh, plugin. So you don't have to have Metabox. I just prefer this uh, plugin and uh, all of its extra features. Um, after we create our CPT uh, and custom fields, we're gonna look at how we can display that data on the front end with the Bricks query loop. So with the query loop, we're gonna add our team member uh, CPT and custom fields into a dynamic uh, nestable slider or carousel. Uh, we're gonna style each dynamic slider with classes. Uh, I think this is really important and uh, I really like the new updates to the Bricks uh, class UI. And we'll show you why classes are so important and uh, how they help control your site globally. Uh, next, we'll go through Bricks templates and short codes. So we'll save this new slider as a template, template and see how we can uh, bring that to other parts of our website. Uh, Metabox views will be next. Uh, this is a little extra part. Um, I've been building uh, landing pages with Metabox views and HTML. So uh, we'll show you what that's all about and how you can get your Bricks components inside the Metabox view. I, I think that's just so cool. And if uh, at the end we'll look at some uh, playing around with the builder uh, show you how some style sheets are running this Metabox view with WP Codebox, and we'll play around with some classes uh, on our new dynamic slider. All right, let's get started. So step one, create the Metabox uh, custom post type and custom fields. So head on over to Metabox. We're gonna create a new post type by clicking new post type and adding a name. And in this case, the plural and singular name are gonna be the same uh, because it doesn't really matter. In this case, you might wanna have uh, different names for plural and singular uh, for your use cases. So this is gonna just be called the team uh, custom post type and click publish. I don't think we need any other uh, no, I mean, you can go and look through some of these settings, like whether this will have an archive or not, um, whether you can perform uh, queries on the front end, things like that. Uh, for this, uh, the default settings are gonna be fine. Um, we'll select custom fields. I don't think you need to, but just in case we'll support custom fields on this post type. And we don't need any taxonomies right now, so pretty much out of the box it should work. Maybe uh, this custom fields. Click publish. So we've got our new team uh, custom post type here. And this is where we will store our team. If you go and look at it, there's nothing there. If we add a new team uh, post, uh, there's no custom fields here, so it would just be a generic uh, post. So we wanna extend that with custom fields. Um, specifically for our team member image, heading, and description. So head back to Metabox and go to custom fields. 
I've already built a, a quick one real quick, but let's trash it and start over. Um, team members be our field group. And before we create those, let's go and look at the settings because this is important. Right now, the location or where these custom fields will apply are set to post. Uh, and since we're using a custom post type, we need to delete that and assign it. So we're gonna let these fields apply only to team. If you had other places, you just add them right here. It's quite easy uh, and don't be intimidated by the user interface. Um, it's once you get used to it, it's really easy to follow. So we've got our new custom field group and we need to add our image, heading and description. I use the image advanced uh, almost exclusively. It has a lot of nice features and this is going to be the uh, team photo, team member photo. Um, take note of the ID. This needs to be unique. Sometimes I'll uh, prefix it with something like team member underscore or something to help make it unique if I'm using other team member items. Um, all you need to know is that this should be a unique ID uh, for your custom field. We'll add two more. The next one is going to be a text and this is going to be team member heading. Add one more and this will be team member description. That should be everything we need. Uh, all the rest of the default values are okay. And we'll click update. Now, if we go back to our team and add new, you'll see that we have places for uh, the photo, the heading, and the description. Let me turn this webcam off real quick. So let's add myself. My name is John and I will be this, like, like this guy right here. That will be me. And my heading will be uh, head of the party planning committee. Spell it right. Okay. And my team member description, something like uh, likes to plan a good party. Woohoo. And let's publish that. So we'll have other team members, but we need to. Uh, set up our slider first and show how the dynamic data will work. So our next step here, we'll jump into the builder. We're gonna add a team member, uh, the custom post type and custom field to a dynamic nestable slider using a query loop. And then we wanna style each one of those uh, with classes. So I've got a page set up called slider and let's edit that, edit with bricks and start building the slider. So we have some new uh, nestable items in the 1.5 beta. Uh, this really makes uh, your designs more dynamic. You can add whatever you want into these uh, elements here. Um, so when we first bring it in, we'll have three slides. Save that, let's look at it. So now we've got slide one, two, and three, but you know, they're static. So if I wanna add a new slide, I've gotta open the builder. Um, open the builder, come add a slide, uh, make sure I add the right elements and do a lot of copying and pasting probably. So instead we're gonna let our custom post type uh, control that. So we don't need 
slide two or three. So let's delete those. All we need is slide one. And I'll explain why when we get to the query loop, uh, because we're gonna loop through our custom post type. And by loop, it just means it's gonna go back and grab uh, all those uh, different posts inside there and using Brick's dynamic data functions, uh, pull that data in dynamically. Um, so we don't need a button. We do need an image. Oh, sorry. We need an image. Bring that to the top with this nice silky smooth drag and drop. I love it. Uh, add a description. So that's a text. Use a basic te text here. Bring that to the bottom. Okay, so first things first, we need to set up our classes. Um, classes will help you control uh, so much throughout your website. So I highly recommend using uh, a class on all of your elements. So for this slide, um, I'm not gonna put one on the component here, but on the actual slide, I'm gonna call it slide and add that. Um, in for the image, let's do slide underscore underscore image. So this is the image of the parent slide. Heading, same thing, slide, heading, slide, text. So now that we've got our uh, classes set up, let's double check them, heading, image, text, all there. Uh, we're ready to start bringing in dynamic data. It's really easy. Um, so what we wanna do is associate this slide with the custom post type which is team member. So we go to our slide and we enable query loop. And I love bricks because it has this little icon over here. I have to turn my webcam back on because I get so excited. I, it's got this nice little loop icon that knows, tells me that immediately I've got a query loop there. That's Those little uh, details are so cool. Um, so let's build our query loop by clicking use query loop. And then right here, we need to define our query. So we're going to bring in our team uh, post type. So we're looking at posts and then we need to bring in our team. So that'll tell this slide to start looking for each post and then bring in any custom fields that we define uh, for each one of these parts here. So we've got our uh, slide query set up for the loop, and that's all we need to do with the query loop. And then we need to come and define our dynamic data on each one of these. Um, let's select dy dynamic data on the image, and it should be down towards the bottom. So we've got our Metabox uh, team. That's what we called it. So we've got our team member photo heading and description. We'll drop that in and let's make it um, not quite so big. I think this is a slight bug in um, 1.5. It's already been reported. Uh, let's set the object to scale down. Picture. Okay, yeah, it's actually HTML tag. You have to define an HTML tag or else it does that. So that's a little bug. Uh, they're gonna fix that. Um, so click picture. And I'm actually not gonna put any object fit. So just leave settings just like that. Uh, save. And let's do the heading. So it says slide one, but we want dynamic data. Um, so I think you can search. Oh, that's so nice. Team member heading. <laughs> I love it. Uh, basic text is next. Let's delete all this. And select its description, team member description, just like that. And hit save. All right, so let's check that out on the front end and see uh, if our dynamic data come through. Refresh. All right, so we've got 
our person there. He's the head of the party planning committee and he likes to plan a good party. All right, um, let's do some styling here so we can just make it look a little bit better. Um, I think that's fine for now. So we're gonna make sure that we're on our slide heading when we do our styling. Um, this is gonna be an H3. Let's do uh, color black and I don't know, 35 pixels. For the team member, let's do something a little different, maybe blue. And on the slide itself, let's add a little bit of gap. And if you're using a CSS framework, um, you know, I, I recommend doing that. Uh, I personally use one, um, but for this, we're just gonna hand program all this in. Um, let's do 10 pixels, 20 pixels, save that. Okay, so now we've got our team member photo um, heading dynamic data, which is cool in itself. Um, but where it really becomes powerful is when you start using uh, the WordPress and Metabox backend to uh, build those out. So if your client wants uh, to add a new person, you know, they don't really have to call you um, if that's something that they want. Uh, to be able to control, they just create the new team member and, and that's that. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, these are really small, so that's not going to look gonna look a little blurry let's go back down to 90 okay so let's hop over back on to the uh, custom post type and we'll add a new one um, this will be Shelly and let's turn this off for a second and this is going to be the VP of sales like spikes and reading a good book. Let's add a couple more. Um, Carl with a K and this is him and he is the lead software developer and likes to code all night long. And one more, uh, this will be Nancy. This is the manager of content. All right, so now that we've got our query loop set up, what we should see when we refresh is the dynamic data just populate right on the front end, which is, you know, this is why we use query loops. This is why we use dynamic data. This is why we use classes. Like everything is exactly the same. Um, I just, it's so easy to set these up. Uh, what we're 20 minutes in here and we've got this really nice uh, slider. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how you bring dynamic data into bricks um, with Metabox, but what else we want to do is 
look at templates and short codes. So the next part is going to be um, a little bit uh, more detailed on what do we do with this thing now? Like we built it, should we just stick it on a page and leave it there or should we reuse it? Um, personally, I like to reuse it. Uh, so I've never done it this way, but let's save this template and this will be slider team slider. And this is gonna just be a section and no template bundle save. Okay, so we've got our uh, dynamic team slider here. Um, let's close this down and close this down. Let's look at Metabox uh, views a little bit um, and how we can use bricks, templates, and short codes. So Metabox view is exactly what it sounds it's it's a it's a view that you can place anywhere you want and by view i mean it's um it's some html and if there's any css you know associated with it you can uh put that view anywhere you want on your website um, so right now this is set to be a short code but we're gonna turn that off and set this to singular. Um, so this is gonna apply to a singular location. If you've ever used other builders um, or bricks, you know you have uh, dynamic conditions where you want this to apply, where you want that to apply. And with brick, uh, with Metabox views, you have the same thing. Um, so I'm going to place this on our a page called test which is currently my home page right now so um, this is going to be uh, only applying to test and this is going to be the layout between the header and the footer so bricks is actually going to be controlling uh, the header and footer um, i get really excited about this too bricks is so awesome that it's a theme and you know how they've they've built their uh ecosystem and all of their tools so I can use so many different tools with bricks uh, so I have a template for my header and footer and I just want to put this view inside the header and the footer so I'm going to update this meta box view and if I go to my home page I should see that pop up so this is the page um, this was the inspiration for the uh, slider now this is just html this has no javascript you know it's not anything it's just html um, it's a really nice looking uh, landing page and the menu is a bricks menu so uh, this is a bricks template and bricks uh, template uh, for for the header and footer is is powering this right here so I can drop in the Metabox view right underneath uh, the Bricks header. Um, so now what if we wanted to bring in that slider that we just built? Um, this is where I, I just love uh, the Bricks uh, templates and their short codes. So I'm going to go over to my template, which we saved, Dynamic Slider. And I'm going to grab a short code, copy, come back uh, to my Metabox view. and edit it. Okay, where do we want to put this? I think we should put it at the bottom. Um, so we've got the closing HTML tag, the closing body tag. Uh, you know, this, if this was semantically correct, this would be something like your main content. Um, and then this is the last section. So this is the last section here that you see. So that's the last section tag and uh, moment of truth this should drop in we do probably need to check where that template applies if it doesn't pop up it probably means that that template doesn't apply for pages oh it is set up right awesome okay so now again <laughs> this just blows my mind I, <laughs> this is crazy all right we've got bricks controlling the header metabox view controlling the page content 
which you don't have to do that. You could build this page in bricks if you wanted to. I just have this really great uh, HTML section. Um, so why not use it um, for like a landing page or um, something like that? If you're building a really big website, you might not want to do something like that because you'll have short codes and views all over the place. But if you have a really well-designed system, it would work. Um, I'll leave that up to you. I'm just showing you what you can do. Uh, let's see if it's responsive. Um, so I'm noticing that the uh, heading, the header is breaking a little bit differently and I know why that is, but we could fix it real quick. Let's fix it. Um, so I'm gonna, in, yeah, let's inspect this one more time. So I know that there's a container class on my main content here um, and it's called container. And I bet if I pop that onto the bricks header, let's see, container. Nope. I bet though, if we go and edit that, let's see. Sorry, wrong one. Here's the bricks header. Let's drop that container right here. Um, we probably need to center it. Uh, if we don't get it here pretty quick. We'll stop. Okay. Now let's check one more time. Yeah, let's uh, punt on this one. Container. Let's make sure I got it spelled right. Yeah, I'll have to play with that later. Got some tidying up to do with that. Um, so let's continue back on with how we got this here and how that works. So let's go back to the view. We've got our meta box view here. Um, and actually you probably don't need this head tag. Uh, Bricks will power that since we're placing this in between the header and footer, but anyways, all we did was drop that short code for the bricks template where we wanted it and it'll show on the front end. Um, if we move it somewhere else. Let's find the next section tag. So if we dropped it here. It's here. Now, of course, we need to do some styling to make it match our theme, but uh, yeah, that's that's how it works. Um, super powerful, you know, like if, like some actual use cases for this, like if you had a client that wanted to um, display like some sort of top bar uh, during certain times, you know, you could drop that short code into a meta box view or wherever you want um, and just display it sometimes. I think when Bricks brings conditions in, it'll be very powerful so that you can run conditions on some of these things. But you know, you don't, you don't have to stay with the builder if you don't want to. You can use the builder to build components and move them around, which is what I've been exploring and digging into. Um, so let's go back and look at what else we've got to do. I'm gonna turn the meta box view off for now. So to turn it off, um, you could just delete that condition or I'm gonna just change it into something like a short code and it won't display on that page anymore. Um, so if I go to my home page now, it's uh, 
the bricks data. So this was the page uh, designed in bricks. So if you use a Metabox view, it's going to overwrite that. I know that's kind of confusing. Um, I'd be happy to explore that more if anyone's interested. Uh, so we looked at Metabox view and how to add a template shortcode there. So let's go and play around with some CSS real quick uh, and briefly look at WP code box. Um, let's do that real quick. So WP code box is a snippet editor. Um, this is some Tailwind CSS. Uh, it's minified, so it's not looking real pretty right now. Um, but to get the styles for the home page we just looked at, um, I'm going to drop those into WP code box and have that uh, placed on the front end. So uh, I, I love this software to do that. Um, it makes it really easy to store my styles. So I know that this style goes with that theme. Um, I can store that in the cloud. I just, I just find this really, really handy if I need to add some uh, quick CSS to a certain place or add it to a certain condition. Um, you can do all that with WP Code Box. Uh, there are others out there. Um, this is what I've settled on and uh, what I prefer to use, but uh, there's tons of other options uh, for snippet management. Um, okay. So I want to talk just a little bit more about classes and why classes are important and what we can do with classes. Um, this is another bug I found in 1.5. So our slider is gone and I've kind of got it broken down to this pagination. I think if you turn it on and off, it pops back up. So uh, I think that bug's been reported too, but if that happens to you when you're playing around, uh, pagination show hide should refresh it and bring it back into view. So let's come over here and um, let's see. Great other feature with bricks is you can edit in two places. So I think I can copy this section. Yeah, let's try it. Copy. Let's paste. Awesome. Oh, that's so great. All right. So I want to play around a little bit with this um, accordion here. Um, what you'll see. with the nestable accordion is we have our accordion nestable and our item. Um, so you could make this dynamic too. Right now this is not dynamic. It's just like I have to go and build every single one of these. So for each one of these uh, accordion items, I built it manually. I'm not using any dynamic data versus the slider. You know, I've got one slide with the query loop bringing in the custom post type data. Um, so that's the difference. I prefer to do everything as dynamic as possible. Um, but let's look at some CSS. So with this accordion, we have an item, a title, and on the title we have a heading and an icon. And it's so cool that Bricks has built it like this so that we can control whatever we want. So we want to change the icon, we can. Uh, we can do whatever we want. Um, out of the box, there aren't any animations. So let's build an animation real quick on this uh, drop down uh, icon here. Um, and this was a little tricky to do. And I popped this CSS in a code block. You could um, use WP code box to put those styles in. But right now, uh, I'm going to use this and I'll show you how I built this. Uh, to do that, we need to go look at the front end and do some inspection work. All right, so let's do slider. So if you hit this, you'll notice that we have an animation. So let's go right click and inspect and look what happens. So we need, we 
when you see things moving about, uh, odds are it's a JavaScript event. Um, and you can see this happen. So let's inspect, let's find our That's the heading, that's the uh, nestable accordion. And so on each item, there's an event. And this is gonna be the click event. And I'm not sure if there's keyboard controls yet, but there's click events. So I know that when this gets clicked, it's gonna fire that JavaScript event. So let's click it. You'll see everything light up You click it again. So it's the JavaScript's controlling all the CSS styles to make all this happen. So when it's closed, it just says bricks nestable and it's listening. It's listening for those click events with that CSS. So when you click it, it puts this CSS class called bricks open and that's our target. That's uh, the selector we're gonna key in on um, because it's dynamic. When I click, that pops up. So let's first, let's open up a notepad, notepad. Um, so I know that we need that brx-open. That's that's the class that gets added when it's open. Um, the next thing we need is we want to mess with our um, icon. So let's go down to the icon and that is this right here. And we can add classes to that icon in the builder. So what I did was I targeted the icon and I added a class called accordion icon. So we're gonna need that. Accordion icon. And let's see, check my notes here, what do we do? So with the CSS, what I'm gonna say is when we know that when we click it, bricks open is applied and accordion icon is what we're gonna to wanna to target. So this is how you would target that icon here. Um, if you want to get more specific, you can add more selectors. Um, but I think this is all we need right now. Uh, so when bricks open, run accordion icons. So what we're going to do is transform that by rotating it 90 degrees. So when it's closed, it's going to come back 90 degrees. When it's open, it's going to rotate 90 degrees. And then we're going to transition of five seconds uh, on the transform. So this rotate is a is a transform. So we want to target that transform uh, transition property. Um, you could put all here to target all of them, but we're just going to hit the transform. So let's look what happens if we take that away. And let's take that away. Click here to run that code. So now, um, let's refresh here. Yeah, our CSS is stuck in the cache. Save. Okay, and preview mode, it's not cached. So let's check it one more time. Refresh. Okay, yeah, so cache is cleared. So when we click it, bricks.open is applied, but we don't have any nice transition. So if we take away, you know, let's just delete the whole thing. Um, I think maybe we could just turn execute code off real quick. Bear with me here. Um, let's copy that, cut that, and let's try one more time. We're still cached, so save preview mode. Oh man, it's really holding on to that right now.
Yeah. I think this could be a little bug too. Um, it really seems to hold on to some of these styles in the code code block. Save. Yeah, that stinks. Wish that would go away. Maybe run code, no code found, cool. Let's try it one more time. Okay, golly, it's really hard to get that out of the cache there. But anyway, so now without that, our little icons don't do anything. Let's paste that back in. Um, so we've got our bricks open, accordion icon, transform, rotate 90. Um, so again, when bricks open is fired with the JavaScript, we're going to target accordion icon. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees and we're going to do um, transform 1.5 second. Ease in out. Save. Let's click run code again and see if that runs. Save here. Let's fix our slider one more time. Click pagination. Bring it back. Okay. Save. So now what do we got? Okay, wow, that's really slow. Oh my gosh. One Mississippi. Okay, let's uh, make that a little quicker. Um, let's do 1.0 seconds. So one second. Run code, save it, preview. And what you'll notice is when you click it back to close it, it just snaps back. So why does it do that? We've got this nice transition and then it snaps back. So we need to just normally target the accordion icon and you could do this probably on the class too. Uh, uh, inside the builder where you come to the accordion icon, click it and then style your uh, CSS transition right there. Um, but to keep everything together, I'm doing it over here um, in this little code block. So if we copy that transition here, save it, run the code, preview on the front end, um, it opens and then it comes back. So that's happening uh, because we added that transition to the uh, accordion icon uh, class as the default. So this here was uh, when it rotated open, and so we need to uh, add that transition, you know, just to the normal class, not when we're targeting it with the bricks open. So uh, this only applies when the the brx dash open class is on. Uh, that element. So when it's not there, we also need to tell it, hey, if that's not there, uh, we need to do it anyways. Um, let's do half a second. Yeah, it's better. Um, so we can play around with any CSS we want uh, using the builder or with a code block or with uh, WP code box. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, that's really all I have to show. Uh, I'm, I'm just really impressed with uh, the Bricks builder. It's, it's come, come a long way so fast and uh, I'm really enjoying working with it. Uh, the second half of this uh, video is a little more complex and a little more error prone on my part with the video, but if you have any questions, uh, let me know and I will do my best to answer them. Um, 
I hope you see the power of the bricks query loop, the power of custom fields, and uh, the power of CSS uh, and classes, uh, and how you can make those changes. Um, so, uh, thanks for watching. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, let me know. Thanks again.